Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Brown. I'm the executive director of uh, the sponsor of this session with John, which is the Center for Nonviolent Communication. And this is a learning session for all of you. It's also a fundraiser. So uh, for those of you who get value out of this session and have the means and have the desire to contribute, I'll be sharing a link in the chat as well as in a follow-up email. Uh, we would really welcome any uh, donation you'd like to make to our work. Uh, John is volunteering his time. Uh, as a means of him contributing to the Center for Nonviolent Communications. Uh, John has been a certified trainer with our organization for more than 20 years. And he also worked very closely with Marshall Rosenberg for many years. He is the creator, the founder of this work. Yeah, so um, really good to be with you all today. Thank you for coming and being with us. I do, I do want to just say too, there's a couple of people that have been working with me more recently in my trainings and, and they're here today to be in a support role if it's Simon and John, Simon and John. Yeah, thanks both Hello. of you for Hello, everybody. being here to, to help out if need be. Been, been doing the nonviolent communication work for over 20 years now. And some, some of you I, I know from way back and some of you from maybe more recently and others, maybe not at all. I, uh, from pretty early on, the, my focus has been with conflict and how to bring NVC to, to conflict, to mediating conflict. The, uh, the body of work I developed over many years with a colleague, very close friend and colleague, Ike Lassiter. We ended up calling it Mediate Your Life. So how do you take the sort of the perspective of, of, of a mediation framework, like the two chairs of disputants that are disputing and a third side, a third perspective that's holding the, the space of both sides, the empathy for both uh, as a really powerful way to relate to conflict in general. Uh, but we started with our training way back uh, at the beginning, Ike and I, with this triad practice, this being in the triad uh, of, of the three chairs and why I titled this um, event, The Magic, Mediating Your Life and the Magic of the Three Chairs is we really found that the practice in the, in the triad mediation process was, could often be kind of magical in a way of the depth of the experience that would happen, the kind of connection that would happen between the people practicing together, the way you could work with a difficult situation in that kind of way, the way you could share learning together. And we found pretty quickly that it's it a powerful way to learn and practice and develop skill, just general skills with nonviolent communication and to be more comfortable in conflict, to get a sense that, yeah, it still might feel scary and. Um, but that there's a sense that, oh, that we can kind of relax a bit into some confidence and trust that we know how to navigate, uh, that there's the structure of the, of the chairs, there's these, uh, uh, we're applying some skills, and then there's this, we call a map, the map of a sequence of, of steps. So that's what I want to share with everybody today, uh, a bit of that, of that magic that comes practicing in the triad, and it doesn't mean you're, you need to wanna to be a mediator uh, in the formal sense. You might wanna be able to learn how to informally mediate, so like between your kids or uh, friends, or you know, when the time, when the moment arises, and, and it can be um, quite helpful to know you can step in and, and offer to support um, uh, a difficult conversation. But, but also just, just to be able to get a sense for yourself of having that way of that sort of image of that structure of, of these, the two sides, differing sides and this third side that's supporting. It can, I found, I found over the many years, it's just a powerful kind of image to carry in your own mind that uh, of a way to relate to any conflict situation, including inner conflict. So mediating between the parts of ourselves uh, is another application. 
how to put an inner conflict into the outer chairs and different people role playing parts of oneself, which can be quite powerful. Also just say something about, about conflict in general as we're getting started. I just see that this that we're in a, a time of, of human history, really the way I see it, that things, there is a, a lot of conflict that's stirred up now, a lot of polarization and tribalization and um, all over the world in the, in the political, societal sense of, um, and of course there's the pandemic that continues on and all the different kinds of conflicts around, but there's so many other huge challenges that we're facing societally and just and globally just as, as, as human beings on the planet how we're relating to, to democracy, to a warming climate. And there are all these tornadoes that just happened here in the United States, just like 30 or more tornadoes that went through the middle Southern part of, of the country. And so I'm pointing to all this, cause I think like there's the conflicts we normally experience in our day-to-day -day lives. And just part of being human, part of being alive, and not just human, but any living being on the planet, right? There's gonna be conflicts to deal with. So there's all that um, inner and interpersonal conflict, but that I, I like to reference just the time that we're in that is uh, a, lot of, a lot of conflict that we're, we're experiencing. And, um, and it's, all, it's all connected and it all relates. What's happening out in the larger world affects our inner and interpersonal lives. So in a little bit, I'll invite some folks to share like what, what conflict you're dealing with. And so a chance to hear from some of us sort of what, and, and, and what would be really beautiful is this, this sense that there's many people on the call and so that, and all over the world and just hearing the kind of things that we're dealing with, whether it's in our personal lives or how it's more related to the larger challenges that we're facing economic challenges or what a lot of a lot of different things going on in the world and then i'll i'll um, get an example from one of you and and we and and work on it and put it into the chairs and 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 we'll mediate a bit with with that if, if we can find someone that would like to do that i'm curious to hear i love hearing from people um, when I'm doing anything like this, just to hear. So if anyone wants to share uh, a, a conflict, a situation that you might want to put into the uh, demonstration with me, or you just want to share it, just something, a challenge, so that we can connect with each other that way and kind of, in a way, kind of hold together the different individual, but also universal ways that we have these kind of conflicts and challenges. So. Would love to hear if anybody wanted to share what you're bringing to today in terms of responding to conflict. Erica from the USA. So Erica, yes. My personal reason for being here is, is my relationship with my oldest adult, 45-year-old son. It is impossible for us to, to talk to each other without him being angry at me. Mm. And I've tried just listening. There's nothing remarkable that's happened. I know he loves me and he knows I love him, but um, part of it has to do with alcohol, I'm sure. Mm. But um, it's been like this for five years. So that's my personal reason. My, my overarching reason is what you mentioned. It's just how to navigate this world that is so polar. It's yeah. It breaks my heart, and it's really. Uh, wish everybody could be here. So thank yeah. you for this workshop. Yeah, thank you, Erica, for sharing something vulnerable to you. It's, it's so close to your heart, and um, yeah, speaking to the larger things big picture as well. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, John. The next person is Natalia from Colombia. Uh, hi, Natalia. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm a teacher here in Colombia, and the reason I joined um, today is because I see the kids are having great difficulty to communicate to each other. 
there are very toxic ways they're using to communicate and they're normalizing them, like uh, answering in a very aggressive ways or even hitting themselves. I teach elementary, middle and high school. And I see that throughout all the different ages. Uh, and that has me really concerned because I have found that they have no vocabulary to express their emotions, to express what they're feeling, what they're going through. And, and I think it's very important uh, in my role as teacher to have the tools to help these uh, kids and teenagers to be able to communicate in healthy ways so that they could live through this historical moment that we're living. I think it was very hard for them to be in lockdown for so long without attending school. And then coming back, it has oh, made a whole, I don't know, something devastated to them. Yeah, yeah. So how you're, you're on the front lines there experiencing how what's happening in the world is affecting the, the younger people and um, tr somehow trying to cope with that. Yeah, wow, that's, uh, that sounds like a lot. It's, it's one thing as a parent, that's enough, but then also in the schools is, uh, yeah. So thank you for sharing that with us. Hold that uh, with you together, yes. Okay, next John is uh, Adam from the Czech Republic. Hi from Czech Republic, from Prague. Um, I actually would like to share my um, very recent conflict. It's um, been two days uh, um, since I figured out, I, I'm living, just to uh, tell you the situation, I'm living together with another two guys. So we are like sharing one small house here in Praha. It's like almost like a flat and I've been sending the rent to the owner every month. Mm. And I figure out that my one of my roommate, roommates, actually flatmates, my close friend, uh, that he didn't pay me for uh, six months. And I wasn't checking because, you know, like you pay with the card and like there is a lot of transaction in account. And so it's like partially my mistake. I didn't check, but I thought that we are good friends. And so that this cannot happen. And um, basically my trust towards him is now very, very low. And mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe that he just, you know, didn't know about it, that he's not mm -hmm. sending me money for six months. And so, you know, the, the I think the debt could be now like $2,000, for example, I think something about that. And yeah, it's just, uh, I need to have a talk to him and because I have some awareness of nonviolent communication, I would like just uh, to figure out what will be the most effective way. Of course, screaming inside of me, like go and be very violent, but I would like to try to be a bit different. And um, yeah, so this is my, my very current conflict. I would like still be a friend with him, but on the other hand, I really feel that my trust towards him is super, super low at the moment. It's a bit of shock for you too, because this is somebody that you have felt quite pretty close with. And then to see is, is a sort of shock to this uh, as, and, and as well as other emotions related to. Yeah, totally. I just figured out one, one night and I couldn't fall asleep because of it. I was like, how is this possible? I just mm. couldn't, couldn't believe what I saw. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the trust, the needs around trust in friendship and um, yeah, yeah. Wow, oh, thank you for sharing that. And very, very current, very alive for you to deal with. Very, and, and it sounds like you haven't yet had the conversation, but you're needing to get yourself ready to have this difficult conversation. We had a little bit of a chat, but not, not the, mm. the main conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you, Adam. Thank you. Who's next? Okay, John, next will be Sharon from Northern Ireland. Hi, John. Um, yeah, just personal conflict. So with young son, young adult son um, who lives with me and I just don't seem to be able to communicate in a way that I can get my needs met. Um, seems very focused on his needs. And I suppose it's been going on for 21 years now, but it'd be good to get to see something different now that we're both adults. Mm. 
so this is your son who's 21? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He's 21 now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So wanting to, sounds like, uh, talk about this, something that's been there for, for, for a while and maybe trying to get to a different place with each other. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I suppose in earlier days, his needs did matter more. Um, mm -hmm. But we're still playing those same roles. Mm. Yeah. yeah, how to make the transition from the, our, our uh, children being younger to now becoming adults and, 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 and being able to talk about the tra that transition and mm -hmm. the maybe more adult-adult relationship we want to have. Well, so yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sharon. So we'll okay. go to Terry in the United States in Texas. Hi, John. Great to see you. My issue is uh, within my own self, the different parts of me. It's intense in my life right now in that I just, I'm about three weeks out of a very big surgery and I'm recuperating. My boyfriend is really my main caretaker. Mm. And we've been together 20 years. And the same challenges are going on now that have gone on the entire 20 years. But because I can't do anything for myself, we've been locked in a room for pandemic. And because of the challenges with, that are inherent to a caregiver and a care receiver, and the pain medicine and all of that stuff that rolls into something like this, I'm finding myself violent on the inside for mm -hmm. moment, moments where I have forgotten and don't use one word that I've spent since 2004 in nonviolent communication learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just cussing like a sailor and, and looking, looking at myself as if this is not you, Terry Lynn. Mm -hmm. This is not you. This isn't you. This is conflict that you can't resolve. You can't figure it out. You're so battling inside your head that you're turning into a just a nut job. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that's so that's part of the inner dialogue there. That's part of you. Uh, has that and then the parts of you that are expressing in this way that's uh, got this language and intensity to it and yeah yeah so how to especially when you're struggling with uh, this kind of challenge of, uh, of physical health uh, other circumstances that really bring up a lot of um, a lot of intensity in us so I'm guessing a lot of people can relate right now, TD, to when our NVC skills uh, are not there for us the way we'd like. Uh, and that is the nature of conflict that, that, yeah, I'll just use what you're sharing, Terry, just to say to my experience and developing this training over the years, working with conflict that we found early on that, yeah, this, this intensity of conflict, it triggers the parts of our brain that are much more primal and survival oriented and very strong that we that that work with intensity in us and how to um, how to be with that so we can use our skills you know and having enough support with others so we can um so we can use our skills so yeah i, I appreciate you saying all that because it's it's so relevant to why conflict can be difficult, all that, that gets um, so intense in us and how we can lose our, our ability to use our skills. But there's always a way to come back and start again and get this kind of support. So thank you, TD, for, for sharing that. And I'm sorry, it's so challenging and just good to be with you here right now. Okay, John, uh, that one more will be Victor from Bulgaria. Hello, my name is Victor. Um, I am thankful to be here and uh, I am in college and uh, I have been trying uh, to have uh, relationships with 
people, any kind of relationships, but uh, I have seen, I have spectated that thanks to COVID, a lot of people, uh, they're getting more afraid, more kind of angry, uh, afraid to open, to be open-minded, to, to be more friendly. And uh, I'm, I'm here uh, wondering and uh, just, just uh, for me, uh, I want to know how can I make um, in this uh, situation that we all are suffering, how can I make more relationships mm. and talk to these kinds of people, actually. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like really aware of how what's happening more at the social level is affecting the ability to to connect uh on the personal level and just that's a, that's another kind of conflict to to navigate in a way of how to how to uh relate to people given given the situation that we're in yes yes thank you victor just thank you everybody who has shared and everybody who wanted to share yeah, there's something about being in a space like this where we can feel like we're, we're not alone in all these intense challenges with conflict and with um, what's happening in the world. And we can um, feel the universality of that. I, I, I wanna circle back to, let's see, who was it? It was uh, Erica. I just wanna ask Erica a few more, just check in with Erica a little more about what you, so you said your son is, is, is older and um, it's been going on for a while, this the thing you wanna talk about with him, right? Right, just talking to him about anything, it doesn't matter. Like for 10 years, maybe he's 45. Hmm. Let's do it, let's try it with your situation. Yeah, should we go for it? Okay. All right. Um, so sometimes what I would do is get try to get one other person from the group to volunteer to play the role of the son and, and I mediate. I think I'll, I'll tap John or Simon to, to play the role of your son. So it looks like it's going to be Simon. So Erica, you're allowing us to put this into the chairs and the magic of the three chairs. And it's, oh, yeah. So before we will get, we'll give Simon a little bit more about a starting point for, for his role. What I wanna share with all of you, um, everybody listening. So what I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate just the, the basic steps of this mediation process. And um, it's, It's like I think of it as it's it's our first roadmap in our training, which we developed many different roadmaps of different types of conflict, but this is the first one. And it's there's there's something about having a we call I've I've loved calling a map to follow, even though it maybe technically isn't exactly a map in a in a certain way. But for me, that the metaphor of navigating through conflict is really powerful that we the image in my mind is there's been there's, there's different territories and regions of conflict and that whatever territory in, if you have a map that can help navigate the, the storminess, the, the rough terrain, that it's really, really helpful um, to have that map. So I think of the chairs as this sort of compass and that the, there's this map of these steps and then the skills of nonviolent communication to use but um, the, the, and, and, and again, the idea, thinking about what Terry shared with us about the inner conflicts um, and the intensity that can come up in us around conflict. If we have a map to follow, uh, if, if we're trying to mediate our way through any kind of conflict, it's really helpful, I think, to have this image of the chairs for me to orient and then to have these, these steps. And the idea is that they're, they're just sort of guideposts along the way to get us through to the other side. How do, how do we get to the other side from disconnection to connection? And then from that connection, new possibilities can, can flow. So the five steps. So the map, let me tell you all the map. Uh, step one of the map is the, 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 the mediator 
uh, ask the first person who wants to speak, that person speaks. And, and then empathize as the mediator, empathizing with the, this first person that's speaking and, and listening for, uh, or, or reflecting back periodically, the understanding of what we're hearing and getting to the underlying needs, the human universal needs. Um, and actually, I like to say not just human needs, it's important to me more and more to say the needs as for all of life, because we, we can be very human centric. And I think that's creating a lot of problems in our, at least our relation uh, with the natural world uh, to only be focused on human needs. So just needs that all of life has these universal needs. So to get to those needs for person A, first person. So there's person A empathizing with them as the mediator. That's step one, getting to the needs. Step two is to ask person B if they would say back what they're hearing, if they're willing. The understanding, the needs. Step three is to then ask person B, okay, now what would you like to say to person A? What would you like them to hear? And then as mediator, empathizing with that person, hearing, understanding, reflecting back, getting to those underlying needs for person B. Step four, going back to person A. Person A, would you now say what you heard person B say? Reflect back the understanding and the needs. And then step five, it's five-step model. Uh, step five is, and often there's a back and forth with those first four steps, like a, like a dance step, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the fifth step is, is the second phase of the conversation. So the first phase is really just about hearing, understanding, connecting. And then the second phase is about solution requests and agreements. So that would be as, as, as a mediator, supporting people to make requests of each other to meet those needs getting to some agreements, that kind of thing. So that's the, that's the five-step roadmap if you're meeting, but it's also actually for the whole, all three people in the, in the process. Because when I'm working with people out in the real world and I'm mediating, I'm letting them know this map of these steps and that I, you know, it's really help, important, crucial that in some way, I'm, I'm inviting them to hold it together with me, that we're working together to, to do this process. And so it's, it's actually a map for, for everybody to follow of how we're going back and forth to, to connect and then come to some new possibilities and some compassionate giving and receiving, as Marshall Rosenberg would say. So that's the map. What I'd like to do is... is demonstrate in a way where the intensity is low and the difficulty is low and uh, that, that you and, and, and Simon playing the role of your son will sort of use more of your skills to make it flow because sometimes people, uh, if, you all, if you all are gonna get a chance to practice this later, wanna do it in a way that's not too difficult or overwhelming. So. Let's play it in a way, Erica, that's real, that's, that's definitely has authenticity and reality to it, but in a way too that, that um, is, is not trying to create a, a, a most difficult role play that we could do on it. That's the dance there. Erica, could you give Simon like one line, some, a, a starting point for him to play the role? What's, uh, there's something, an observation, something you've heard or, or, or seen from your son that's been difficult for you. Very difficult for me when we try to have a conversation and you continue to talk over me and I basically can't participate in the conversation. Okay, so while you're talking, then he'd, he'd start talking sometimes before you're finished. Oh yeah, always. Quite often, quite often. Okay, so that's one thing that happens that's difficult for you, right? All right, so Simon is uh, gonna take on the role of son and that's a, a starting point for you of a, something you do as son. And okay, so as we, as we move into 
having the having the conversation how about we just take a moment and take a few conscious breaths together and kind of sink into the roles okay erica and son thank you for being willing to See if I can help you have a conversation right now with each other about some things about your relationship. And let's say I've, I've explained to you what this process is that, and you've agreed to give it a try to see if it helps to talk in this way of, that I've suggested. And then I would start with who, who wants to go first and what you you like to say something you'd like the other person to hear and it, because of of the way we're doing this perhaps erica as mom is there would you like to start would you like to start sure. and, and some things you would like your son to hear and son is that okay for you if mom goes first yeah all right all right so so mom what do you what are you wanting him to hear right now in this moment? I, I would like you to hear that I want to know who you are. And I want to be able to be a part of the conversation and not have you say that you know me better than I know me and you describe me rather than letting me feel like I am a person in the conversation. Can I see if I'm understanding so far, Erica, what you're saying? That sounds like your experience talking to your son can be that that you you hear him saying things about you and who you are and his understanding of you that isn't necessarily matching yours, and you'd like to have a a, a different way of how you're being known or seen or kind of understood for who you are is that part of what what's you're saying there yeah that is what i'm saying or have a conversation about what he sees so that i can understand it and see if it feels right okay so something about a way you'd like to be talking and conversation that could be more like ex, a, a him letting you know things but then checking out kind of with you right what he's seeing or how he's understanding but in a way that somehow includes you in that conversation and gets your perspective on it yes so as you as you're thinking about this as you're saying this to him right now how how do you feel what's happening in your body right now i feel um really sad and i feel scared because it's so bad mm. um but because we're talking i feel hopeful okay yeah thank you so some sadness there's sadness there there's some some fear and a bit of hopefulness yeah do you want to say like where, how in your body are you feeling that? Just sometimes that helps, can help you and can help him to sort of connect to what you're saying. Is it kind of, how, do you, how are you experiencing those emotions in your body right yeah, now? Yeah, I feel it here. I feel like it gets hard to breathe. That's, that's mm. how I usually notice my stress. I can't breathe well. Yeah. yeah, and I heard you say the words like, it's so bad or something. something's feeling really kind of serious or really intense, really strong for you about about things that have been happening between you, yes? Yeah. Okay. And let's, how about we connect, before we go to, to your son, connect those feelings now just clearly to what you want, the needs that we all share and what you want. There's what you want kind of more specifically with him and how you'd like things to be different, but then there's also what you want that we all want. So, what would you, what are you wanting here? That's even, you know, the deepest layer for you. Um, I want to feel 
the trust and confidence of being family that people care about uh, the other people, you know, that we're safe mm -hmm. together, all of us. And, okay. Um, yeah. So to, to trust that you're safe together, like emotionally safe to, mm -hmm. or just in any sense, just a sense that you're, you're really safe together. Yes. Yeah. Both emotionally and physically. Emotionally and physically safe. Mm -hmm. So that's really important to you. Okay, anything else you want to say about what you want that you'd like him to hear that's important to you, that really matters to you, that you want? Yeah, I would just like him to know me and me to know mm -hmm. him and um, to be, you know, I think it's with every single human in the world that you meet, you just want somebody to be vulnerable to you and you be vulnerable to them and appreciate mm -hmm. life and and try to be part of making the world better you know every single relationship mm -hmm. i think so a few different needs in there one one sounds like to to be seen and known for who for who you are mm -hmm. yes and then and then to be able to appreciate each other and, and life. Does that right. sound right? Right. So is, there, are those, is that a good way to, to say it? You want to feel kind of safety and trust. You want this sense of being seen and known and uh, appreciation of, of life together. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. OK. And, and what I liked as we name these needs, I like to say like that you want them in relation to your son and there's needs he has too. Uh, and then there's just that sense of how we all share those needs. Yeah, I, as, as, as I name them for, for you, right? This, the, can you have the, also hold this sense of how everyone, everywhere on the planet and all of life in a way, these are so important, the things you just said to all of us. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, do you feel ready for me to go over to, uh, to your son right now? Yeah. Okay. All right, son, thank you for being willing to uh, listen, give space to your mom to speak and be heard. And in, in just a little bit, I'd like to hear whatever you want her to hear. And first though, I'm wondering if you have the space in you to let her know what you heard. And you may have a lot of disagreement with certain things. And so it's not about agreeing or disagreeing. It's just letting her know what you heard from her perspective and what's important to her. Are you willing to do that first before you talk about things? Yeah, yeah, I could, I could try. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess there was a lot of things, but um, I, yeah, I guess <clears throat> I heard that, um, well, I, I, I heard that you're kind of scared, um, scared to talk to me um, and um, that you would really like there to be more trust in our relationship but um that i don't know like you don't i'm not safe to be around in some way um or like you don't feel as safe as you would like around me um and that you're sad about that and yeah, and, and and I heard that you care about me and you want to know that I care about you too. I think that's that's what I got. Thank you. Thank you, son, for saying saying what you heard. I heard her talk about about this being seen and and known and kind of understood for her sense of, of herself. Are you can you say whatever you heard about that that she's wanting? Um, 
that she's wanting to be seen um, or known kind of as, as she, as she is, as, as she feels the way she, she is. Mm. Is that okay? Is that right? Yeah. We'll check with her in a moment. If that, if, if uh, but that, that sounds pretty close to what I heard. And I also, lastly, I heard her talk about a, a kind of wanting to appreciate each other and life. Something about that. Did you hear anything about that? You were willing to reflect back. Um, uh, I, I, I think that's what I heard about, um, her just wanting us to like have a good relationship basically, and mm. to care about each other. Okay. Okay. So that's how you heard that part. Before we check back with, with Erica, uh, about if she feels understood so far. Is, is there anything about just like what she's experienced between you, just kind of what she's observed, what she's, that has, has been difficult for her? Just again, without needing to agree to it, that it might be very different for you, but just kind of what's your sense of what she's respond, what she's talking about that happens? What did you hear there? Just to kind of acknowledge that, even if you see it differently. Um. I'm not totally sure if I, if I got this. I, I think I think I heard she say that, um, like I I say, I I I I say things that I shouldn't, or I I I kind of yeah, some something like that. Like I I call her, I I tell her what she is, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is that Okay, right. let's check. Let's check with Erica. So Erica, this, this is a, a process of just each of you doing your best, both to say what you want to be heard about, but also trying to hear each other the best you're able. And now, and now it's just um, clarifying if, if there are things you want to clarify or un highlight or anything that you want to, how, how is it so far with you feeling understood right now? Yeah, I, I think that pretty much you heard what I was saying. And I, I don't know how to be more clear about wanting to be in the conversation. It's not just who I am as a person, but it's it's an opinion, you know, like if we're talking about uh, a sandwich, you know, that I can have my own opinion if I, what I like, if I don't like. <clears throat> and um, instead of him saying, no, it is this and that being the final answer. And um, yeah, it's kind of hard to put into words, but basically when I actually talk with him, I pretty much don't talk. I just listen because it's just monologue all the way through. So Okay, so, so let me see if I'm, I'm getting that. And then son, if you're willing to maybe try one more time just to say back this piece and then it'd be your turn. So uh, first, what I hear here, mom, is that that your experience is this kind of being told what's true for you mm -hmm. from from him, from his perspective, and it's like you want your opinions, your perspectives, kind of how you see things, that to be to be heard and and kind of acknowledged, even if he ha sees it differently. Yeah. So something about like in when you're talking to each other, wanting to feel this sense of 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 being heard and acknowledged for your experience. Yeah. Is that right? Exactly. And then things can happen very different than that. That's difficult, very quite difficult for you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So son, are you just to say that piece back, just what you hear again, you may see it differently. You'll get a chance in a moment to share your experience, but just what you hear and in that piece for mom, just to tell her back what you heard. Um, yeah, that, um, she's, she's wanting to know that, like, when we're talking about something that she's being heard and, and that her, um, um, that, uh, her opinion can be, like, acknowledged, mm -hmm. acknowledged and, um, yeah. Okay. So is that, is that for the moment, 
Great. You're getting enough of it for you, Erica? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, Son, thank you so much for uh, being willing to reflect back like that and um, waiting to, to now speak. And so now, yeah, your turn. What would you, in this moment, having heard your mom, and what would you like to be heard about? What are you wanting her to hear? Um, yeah, I don't, I, I guess I, I, I just, um, I don't know. I feel kind of, I'm, I'm kind of confused in some ways right now. I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to say to a lot of that. Um, but I, I feel kind of bad hearing that, um, that, um, you don't feel safe around me. Um, or like, don't, yeah, that's what I, that's a big thing that I heard. I feel kind of bad around that. I, I guess I don't really know um, what to do. I don't, I don't know what to do about it. Um, and I just, yeah, I just, I don't know what to do. Is, so is this it that you, uh, you feel bad that, 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 her, that she doesn't feel safe around you hearing that, that uh, that's, it's like, that's not what you want. You don't want her to not feel safe around you. And, and you're not sure what to do for it to be different. But that's something that you would like her to know that that's not what you want for her to feel. Right. Yeah. 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 And I, I mean, and also I, I, I guess, you know, there's just a lot of things that she's clearly like wrong about when we're having conversation mm -hmm. and, um, so let me just jump in there. So there, I like to see if it would work for you to say it a little differently that there are things that you see different than her that seem really true to you. And you'd like her to, to, to hear that, to understand how you see it different from her. And that gets very strong in you, very intense for you to want to share that with her and have her see it the way you do and, uh, and concerned about the way she sees it. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Yeah, because that can be easier for her to hear it that way. Mm. That, uh, that it's something really intense that comes up in you to be heard yourself about and concerned about how she might be seeing it. So you're wanting to, to get that being heard yourself for what's important to you and how you're seeing it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's probably there could be a lot a lot more there, I imagine. But if we just even go with this, what you've said so far, uh, does that feel like enough for the moment to have, see what your mom is hearing there? And mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So let let me just kind of clarify now what what I'm hearing that um, there's a as a is it. A kind of a pain or a sadness in you you said you feel bad but is it like kind of a pain or sadness about like you also want safety between the two of you you don't want her to not feel safe you want there to be a sense of safety between you so in a sense the same need for safety that you feel sad isn't isn't getting met does that feel accurate or is it a different emotion there um yeah yeah i feel I, I guess I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So feeling sorry about that. And then this part, when you start to, the energy really comes up strong in you that she's seeing something in a certain way. You see it differently. You really want to be heard for how you're seeing it. What's the feeling in you when that happens? Anger. Anger. Yeah. Yeah, where do you feel that inside you? Do you have a sense of where that, where you really feel that in? Mm. 
just my my jaw really gets tight. Jaw. Okay. Okay. So that anger really comes up strong and and is that a good way to say what you're wanting is is to be to be heard for what you're really concerned about or what's really important to you about what you're seeing. Yeah. 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 I yeah, what's important to me. Okay. Okay. To be to be heard in a way, but both to be seen, to be heard for how you're seeing it. Okay. So let's go back over to to mom. Are you uh willing before saying more yourself to let your son know what you're hearing again you might see it some things very differently than him right obviously but just to let him know what you heard his experience is and what's what's important to him um i think what's important to him is that he doesn't want me to feel afraid and he doesn't understand quite what I mean about um, not feeling a part of the conversation. And I can try and make that more clear. And, um, and I hear that maybe he sounds blamed and I'm really not blaming him, but I'm blaming the dynamic that we've created between us. And um, because I believe he's a good person and, and so that's what I heard, that he feels blamed and he feels angry about it. Okay, so you heard the anger, you're wondering maybe if he has a sense of being blamed for it right? We can check that out. And I also heard this part about him wanting, getting get that anger about wanting to be heard also, like this intensity of, of, of how he sees things wanting. So again, you, you very much want to be included and heard in the conversation for, for your perspective, but I, uh, I don't know if you Maybe you did reflect that back, but maybe it would you maybe again just what you that that part just as the, what his anger is about, uh, and um, because he wants what I mean, I think that's the core question that I have trouble to answer. Um, saying what you heard, just saying without yeah you're just saying kind of what he's wanting even though the way he's doing it right so he's he's going about meeting this need in a way that's really not working for you and you'd like it to be different but it's just sort of hearing what is that need what is it that he's wanting behind this behavior that's difficult for you that, so you he, want to that say, he yeah. wants to be heard and understood understood maybe is better than heard okay. and um and to know that he's cared about, to know that uh -huh. he's not second to his siblings or, you know, to know that he's okay. Okay. All right. So let's check this out. Now coming back to son, how's that landing? Are you feeling, are you feeling understood right now by your mom? Anything you want to clarify or kind of highlight? Um, no, I think that's good for now. Okay. All right. And so I, I do want to, uh, since we're just demonstrating this to, um, to do one more thing before I, I'd like to check in with the, the group a little bit and, and uh, see what we're going to do following this. But first, I just, just, to, just to have a sense, of, I, I think this could go back and forth a number of times between you. Just more like Erica, more you might want to say at this point that would be coming up for you and then, and then son back and forth. But uh, 
even just just to kind of show uh, a little bit of how this can move into this fifth step. Uh, I, my sense is you're not ready to go there, but just even just to just to demonstrate it for a moment. Is there anything, Erica, as a request that you would like? What what request to meet the needs that you have here and that might try to meet the needs he has? So do you have any kind of request that comes to you? My request is if he would tell me what he sees that I can do to make the conversation easier. Okay, so you want to just kind of get his idea. What what would work? What might work for him? That would also give you what you're wanting. Yes. Right. All right. Uh, well, let's start. Let's let's go there. So, son, is there? Can you think of it now? Having heard your mom now, and what's important to her about being also being heard and uh, cared for and safe and and included more in the in the conversation. Can you think of something that would give her that and would give you what you're wanting, what's important for you? Do you have a request? Mm. I don't I don't know how to do that. I don't yeah, I, I wish I wish I could, but I don't know how to do that when we're, you know, when we're talking about something and we clearly disagree. Mm. Yeah, I so I don't know, other than just agree with me. Mm. So maybe you have a sense that wouldn't that wouldn't work for her, but you're not yeah. sure what else what else would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me just try going back to Erica. Erica, is there like if you could if it could be ideal in the ideal world for you, what? What would you like it if he if he could do if he could do it willingly really wanting to do that to contribute to both of you what would it look like that you're talking and what would be happening that you would like to imagine is is happening between you that would really work um, for you I, and for him i think if we each had curiosity about what the other was thinking i think curiosity mm -hmm. would be a really good thing to add mm. okay so curiosity, yeah, I think of that kind of like a another need of, of kind of how you, of, of being curious, yeah, that way of being with each other that can be more curious instead of kind of telling one another what, what's true for one another, right? So what would, what would curiosity look like? Like if you can envision it, if he was being curious or you're being curious with each other, what, what, what's, actually happening in the conversation that you would like just i think um when people and when he and i could ask each other for clarification when when something mm. was said that that was difficult to hear or um it's not really that we disagree about things it's that we don't i mean i'm not in the conversation so it's really like um, so let's see what would bring you into the conversation in a way that you would like. Well, I um, asking questions, asking him questions, and um, and then if I would be able to respond to those questions or thoughts or um, beyond just saying acknowledging that I've heard it, which is pretty much what I do now. Okay, so you're saying something like uh, something about questions, and you know, you could you want to be able to ask him questions, and are you also wanting him to ask you questions rather than telling you what he thinks is true, but more like ask you questions about yeah the way you see things yeah asking yeah? each other questions yeah. asking each other questions, being curious in that way, mm -hmm. and I wonder if some some from something you said earlier, like a way that you would want to finish what you're saying before he starts talking yeah would you like it if he's willing to do that just if he right. if he's feeling that urgency rise up in him if there's some way he could hold until you're finished and then talk yeah 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 okay all right and 
yeah, this might be a huge stretch, but would you also like it if he could, and we'd have to see if he's willing, but just to, to let you know sometimes what he's hearing you say, even if he sees it differently, just to, just to make sure he's understanding you, even if he sees it differently, would you like him sometimes to be able to do that if you asked him? Sure, yeah, I would like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So these are just a few things that could see if, if there's a way to explore uh, putting in place between you so that you could have more of these needs met, uh, including just to feel safer in the conversation that if you had this way of, of being able to do it differently, yes? Yeah. Okay, all right. So because we're just demonstrating, not gonna try to get to agreements and all that, there's a, a lot of possibilities here. And uh, of course we need to see what, what uh, Sun is willing, able, able to do, but um, that just gives a sense of like, what new ways might there be to meet these needs when you're both focused on, because I heard you both wanna feel there to be safety. You both want understanding. You both want care and appreciation in a way. So it's just these different strategies that I've not are not that are clashing. And um, so, anyways, let's let's do a little debrief. And I I like to start with the person whose situation is Erica. So we're out of roles. So assignment, assignment again, and we're not in the role play. We're we're debriefing after. And Erica, yeah, obviously that was a role play. And Simon was really dialing it down because I'd asked him to. Uh, for this first demonstration to not jack up the difficulty and play in a really difficult way, right? So obviously that was there, but the idea is just like putting this into the chairs as a way to experience a conversation differently. And what was that like for you, Erica? Um, that, that, that was good. I mean, it's, it, seems like, um, it seems like a kind of macro of a micro conversation, you know, like the ideas are are big and thinking about it are, and even asking for a conversation to be conducted that way um, seems like a reach in my situation, but it's, but I will do it. And um, I think that it has, this has given me a lot of words mm. to understand myself mm. and things that I want more clearly that I can remember. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, right. Cause you get, by being in the process in the chairs, you get empathy for yourself. You get a bit of understanding for him in this case by Simon playing him and going through it, right? And, and then it gives you ideas maybe of what, of what to do in the real situation, just by role playing it this way, yeah? Let's check with Simon. Simon, as you played the son, what did you notice? What did you experience? And what, what kind of came to you playing the role? Um, like, how was I? feeling if I put my giraffe ears on kind of in a way yeah this can be a meaningful part of the debrief if for for Erica to hear of like if you you know because when you role play often we can drop into for a moment really trying to be that person what insights did you get what what happened for you as the process unfolded of speaking and listening and being being you know reflected back so anything about what you noticed for the, you, this character that you played that could be meaningful to Erica as well. Yeah, I was feeling pretty uncomfortable um, because <clears throat> I was, um, basically hearing a lot of, I was blaming myself for a lot of things, just hearing what I'm doing wrong mm -hmm. and, um, how I'm not good enough the way I am. Mm -hmm. Did that shift at all for you? And as the process unfolded, uh, what did you notice over time around your experience as him? Well, it felt good to have what I said reflected back to me. Mm -hmm. That was, it felt like there was some softening mm. there. Yeah, that, that was, that was nice. Mm. And it was also nice to just have a conversation where um, we could have some level of disagreement without having to agree, mm. you know, or, some, or something like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
And then how you said, and this is a leading question, so you know, be honest about it, but um, was there also any softening in imagining your son in a conversation like this with your mom and hearing, did you hear anything beyond blame, but just hearing as, an, as another human being, how she's feeling and what she wants and what at some level that you could relate to, was there any of that kind of happening as well at all? And if not, then say yeah, that. Either. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, um, I guess I, I, I resonated with when I heard Erica or, you know, mom say um, that she like cares about me and wants to have a good relationship, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm. Then I was like, oh yeah, I want that. I want that too. Mm. Great. Okay, cool. Well, let's let's go back out to the group. And I'm betting so many people can relate to close, close family members or whoever where there's difficulties and these kind of challenges. And so thank you. So in a moment, I'm gonna press a button and all of you will find yourself in a breakout group uh, with a total of four or five people. Uh, the purpose of the breakout group, as I understand you'd like, John, is for people to connect uh, around a few questions. So uh, we would just encourage you and your breakout group to share your name, where you're from, uh, how the session is going for you so far. Number three, uh, how do you tend to relate to conflict? Perhaps something that you've seen has uh, brought some memories of how you've related to conflict. And then number four, what is an example of a conflict you're currently experiencing in your life? Later on, we'll, we'll do breakout where you'll get a chance to practice some of what you just saw, but now you can kind of talk about your experience of what you witnessed and, and the other questions. So uh, enjoy, enjoy your time um, sharing, connecting with each other. Okay, everybody. So the plan is to hear a bit now, again, from some of you in the group, the whole group. I loved uh, hearing what pe people were sharing before and now another chance to hear from new people. So to hear from as many voices as we can in the time we have together. So maybe for about another 10 minutes or so, just to hear a few more people sharing. And yeah, so and just to say something about the role play. So I, I had, you know, very intentionally asked Simon to dial down the difficulty. In role plays, you can easily dial up the difficulty, but sometimes that gets too intense for the mediator or the people involved. So really wanted to show you what it's like to dial it down and use a lot of skill, but still you can have very mean, as, as Erica, I think said, it, it can be very meaningful, even though it's clearly, you know, role playing it in a more, a more uh, dialed down way. So that, and, and we'll see as we later on, my intention is to demonstrate with you when it's a little more intense and, and what that looks like and the different mediation skills that go with more intense, difficult situations. Okay, but now I'm curious, people wanna say anything about what we've done so far, what you've witnessed, anything about your own experience with conflict you wanna share. So Jeff, when you're ready, Okay, we're going to start with Irma Yager. Irma, you've got the floor with John. Hello, Irma. Hello. Hey, hello from New Zealand. Um, you have a few things that are alive in me, just that, um, that breakout room with five people and more intimately sharing. I just get blown away how much it means to me to be connected all over the world. And here we are with that same vision of wanting to support ourselves and others in conflict. Just, yeah, I really, I'm really grateful. And, and also to be sharing my conflict, you know, there wasn't much time for reflection, but just one word, someone guessing something is like, mm -hmm. ah, I noticed a shift. Um, and I think, oh, gosh, you know, it can be so simple and it's so profound. So that was really exciting. And then to share, so I've done a weekend workshop on this free chair model with Manfred Friedrich here in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I really wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> so that's why I came on uh, 5.30 this morning. So we are sort of uh, in the early in Monday morning. And maybe, yeah, for reassurance, if, if people want some, um, you know, hearing it again, it, it, I think it starts to become more and more of like, oh, this is the flow. 
And so if you hear this for the first time, I imagine confusion. And I heard that actually in our breakout space, like, uh, but yeah, I'd love people to stick with it and to actually practice it. I've practiced it. I'm, I'm, I'm using it. And it becomes more and more of a natural of like, oh, yes, this is what we're doing. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, just just as a play, it's like a practice space, and uh, and then when you go out to the, your real the real world, the real situation, things can be different just by having done this kind of deep kind of triad practice. Yeah. Thank you, Irma. Who's next, Jeff? Okay, next we've got Yael Brisker from Israel. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I'm really glad to be here. I'm really enjoying the session. Um, what I enjoyed hearing from the other ladies in my group, we, we found a lot in common as far as how we, we ourselves uh, react in conflict. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much the freeze type and, and uh, three mm. out of four women were, were like that. Mm. So it just comes to me, you know, thinking about is it a kind of a gender related thing also or not, not necessarily. Um, so that's one thing and I also, wanted to ask a question if that's okay mm -hmm. um what what do you do what happens when the other party doesn't want to be in the conversation i have a woman at the 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 the, uh, the the demo with erica was resonated because there's a woman i'm working with whose son doesn't want to be part of the conversation and she's longing you know to connect with him yes. so yeah I was yeah. wondering if you could comment. Well, I'm I'm hearing Marshall Rosenberg's words in my ears about that being able to differentiate the need from the strategy. So the need for connection, for understanding, for healing, for what whatever that might be, and then the strategy, quote unquote, of having it with a particular person who we'd really like to have it with. Yeah. So what's nice about the, the, the three chairs is you can put that situation just like we did with Erica into the chairs and, and she can have a certain kind of experience be, through the role playing that may not be able to have with the real person. And then just doing that can change things and how, in this case, Erica starts relating to her son, even if he's not willing to have a conversation like, like that she can kind of be changed by the experience and start to respond differently in a way that could have a positive impact on him and the relationship. So that's what comes to me to say, there are many things I could say, but in terms of what we're doing today, the power of the role-playing and the, and the process just to do our own inner work and, and the support of other people to do our inner healing work, our trauma work sometimes, and then then things can just kind of naturally shift out in the out in the world from doing that. So, so, so would you so would you add a third person there to to help role play, or would you yeah. ask her to play the role of her son? Or yeah, I mean, you yeah. can do it with just two two person role play. But what you're seeing here, you can do as a three person role play, having someone that's more in that facilitating, supporting the connection on both sides, and. And, and, and as you, you can dial the difficulty kind of up and down a little, maybe more with somebody helping and supporting. So yeah, it's, it's just a powerful format to do role play, the three versus just two. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much for sharing that. And you mentioned the, I think the fight, flight, freeze part of us and some of us freeze and some of us want to fight and some of us just want to avoid and get away. <laughs> So yeah, what noticing what our tendency to do or, or the fawn is another one where we kind of are more pleasing and maybe lose our sense of being able to just be fully authentic in conflict because we get scared. Yeah. And we just want to please the other person. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who else, Jeff? All right, John, the next person will be Sam from the United States. Sam, we're ready to hear from you. Yeah, um, it was a wonderful experience to have that um, the role play, I can see why dialing it down makes it so much easier to reflect the energy of the speaker and then being able to repeat back to the speaker. And then from there, having the person you're in conflict with repeat back the, uh, the words and their energy. Mm -hmm. um, I got a process question. 
in this, what I call healing art of NBC that you put together so eloquently. Um, when the person D, in this case, Simon, the son, was referring to you, John, um, and talking to you rather than talking to his mom, Erica, mm. would you have mm. gently kind of said, well, she's here right now, talk to her? So they're talking to each other, or would you just kind of sit back and wait for? Well, there's a, in a, in a real mediation, uh, regardless, I think it's more connecting when they're talking to each other, which I think is what you're pointing to. Like, yeah, that, right. right. It's just kind of more, more connection happens that way. Yeah. And in, at least in a real mediation, people sometimes talk to the mediator because it feels safer. Right, so it's a way to modulate the sense of safety for oneself by not talking directly to the person. And so depending on my sense of that, I might ask, would you like to speak directly to the person or you could talk to me or you could talk directly to them. Would you like to, you know, I might invite that in a real mediation, which do you feel comfortable speaking to the person or, or is it important for you to talk to me? Like something like that. I, I like to give choice in, if I'm in that. But in a, in a role play, you're even more, right? You can do it however you want. You can, you can kind of, hey, yeah, do you want to, you know, maybe you want to speak to the person, right? Uh, so it's just about kind of communicating about that choice. Right, wonderful. And then one other thing, <clears throat> uh, if I'm not resourced, I love your um, uh, breath, body, need. Breath, body, need, yeah. And I'll put that in the chats from your website that that was very useful and very, very uh, effective resource. So I put that there for everyone. Yeah, and the training we see, that's a way to get into the third chair. The, the inner third chair of, of, for me, it's awareness that the, the two chairs of the polarity and duality, and then the third chair of a kind of non-duality, um, empathic presence that, getting there how do you get there to that third chair right? <laughs> right breath body need is this way if you're going to sit in the mediator chair literally or metaphorically mm -hmm. being able to go to our breath focus on our bodies get to a core need yeah so thanks for mentioning that sam so the next person will be julie from england yeah i just had something really simple that i wanted to say that came up in our group i think i was struck by the slowness of the slowness with which you went through the process john um really paying attention slowly to each person's need and when i said that someone else in the group said yeah never missing anyone's peace and i just mm -hmm. thought that was really important and and significant yeah that's all mm -hmm. thank you for mentioning that julie yeah, this slowing down, um, that's kind of my personality, but I, I really believe too that if we're in conflict and we want to try to bring something new in, we can't go at the normal pace. Like it just, uh, and, and we miss things of each other. We don't acknowledge certain important things. So yeah, and, and some for some people it's, it's too slow. It's, it's, it's painful, it's frustrating, but that to me, that magic happens when we create that spaciousness to drop down deeper places and more possibilities start to arise. So yeah, thank you for naming that, Julie. Uh, let's go next with uh, Yian from Singapore. Um, so I think what came up for me was that this was a really, really slow process. Even, even reading the paper before you started, there were five steps. I'm like, oh, this is five, this is four steps more than I normally take when I'm trying <laughs> to mediate something. Um, and just watching that process was just, uh, it, it was a little boring at times, but I, I'm amazed at how much, um, uh, how much more effort goes into it than I would have put into it. And, and that's very inspiring for me. It tells me that the bar is, is so like, de please dedicate that much more time and effort if I want to do it, mm -hmm. um, properly. Uh, the other thing that I shared that I also want to share with you, uh, John, is that I, I, I don't think I've met you before, but I've learned about your intensity process from Simon. Uh, 
Mm. And I've started a group and we practice your intensity practice every week. Uh, You're regularly. the one who started this group. I've heard about <laughs> this group. Oh. <laughs> right? So people in the group have never met, obviously they've never met you. They've never even met Simon, right? And they're learning about it from me third. I'm untrained and they're learning about it from me third hand. And sometimes mm. when I don't facilitate, they're facilitating this four or five generations away of people learning um, your practice that have never met you, Simon, or even me sometimes. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to say thank you very much for that. And then the work is, 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 I hope I'm not bastardizing it too much on the way down, but it's, it's spreading far and wide. And we wanted to thank you for that. Ah, well, thank you for, for doing it. And yeah, I, I, I think the work needs to evolve and take whatever new forms it wants. And you're, doing what you're doing there. And it sounds like it's contributing to a lot of people. I hear mm. very good things about it. And so thank you so much mm. for, for doing it. Yeah, um, great, great to meet you, John, finally. Yeah, good to meet you. And just to, to, to name for people, this is a particular, another map I call it from our training, the intensity exercise. It's a practice we can do with ourselves, but it's an exercise we can do with a partner too, where we practice with triggers of, of difficulty and intensity and the, the practice of self-connection, and then can we hear the please behind this message, and then how do we choose to consciously respond? So it's a, a way to really practice for those intensity moments where we can easily lose our skills, but if we train ourselves and our nervous system to connect and then to respond consciously, we can, it's amazing how that can, um, what, what we can develop inside ourselves or capacity, the capacity to be with intensity and difficulty and challenge in the moment. So by practicing when we're not in the moment, we can get much better when we're in the moment to stay present basically and respond in a way that we really want to. Um, so thank you all so much for doing that. And I just want to mention too about the slowing down again. Yeah, again, just it can so different than this fast pace we move at. But if we slow down, so much magic can happen, even um, if it's sometimes uncomfortable. Jeff. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, in a moment, we're gonna take our break. Just so you know, John, several people have posted in the chat, they would really love to learn more about this intensity exercise. Um, and I wanna take that as an opportunity to mention that we will send a follow-up email to all of you, which will include links to learn more about John's work, um, perhaps we could find a way to share the intensity exercise, John, and other ways you can learn more from John. Uh, so we'll, we'll include that in a follow-up email. A number of you are newer to this work of nonviolent communication is to talk for a moment about the, the core elements of this way of communicating. To, I'll name them right now. And there's this particular way I like to talk about them and it's very meaningful to me. So I'll just do that for just a couple minutes and then we'll go back into the uh, more demonstration with the, the three chairs. At the core, I think of the, the, the DNA of all the ways of using this, the skills of nonviolent communication. There's these four components that I think of as these portals into connection, empathic connection. Uh, rather than techniques or technical kind of steps, but more each one is its own doorway to this mystery of connection. And so the, the four components, observation, feeling, need, and request. And for me, each of those components is not just about language, that's often how they're learned, taught and learned or as ways of using language, which is very powerful. How we use language obviously is incredibly um, impactful to us. And though I think in a way even more important that each of those components is a dimension of awareness, mindfulness, consciousness. And that's been a deep love of mine for a long time trying to understand what is consciousness, how consciousness relates to spirituality and how to relate to spirituality in a way that's not uh, anti-science, but that science and spirituality actually can 
go hand in hand and I think kind of need each other basically. Um, and consciousness to me is one way to, to, to be in a kind of spiritual realm that's also very relatable to, to science as well. Um, so the idea that observation, feeling, need, and request can be about th this ways of, of paying attention. Um, so observation being, yes, using language that's observing what's happening uh, and observing however we're judging or evaluating what's happening. So using clear language about observation, but then the ability to observe, to observe the mind, how our mind is perceiving, how our mind is generating thoughts, words, and images. So that's a, a basic element of, of mindfulness training is to observe, observe the mind. Yeah. So to, to link that ability to observe the observing awareness of the mind with language of observation, really powerful. <clears throat> and feeling, so awareness of the body. So it's, we can use accurate language to describe our feelings, our uh, bodily sensations and the emotions. But then we can also, it's, it's not for me just about the naming of emotion, it's about feeling the body being connected and grounded in our bodies. Yeah. Sometimes we're still up in our head just thinking about how we're feeling. We're not actually down in our bodies feeling how we're feeling. So this, to me, the, the word presence then comes in. So awareness in the form of presence, presence within our own bodies and connecting to other people, the bodies, uh, the emotional, physical sensations that others are experiencing. So to really, to really feel that in a way that is not just, it's not about the thinking, it's the, the feeling, right? So awareness, presence with body. And then need is, the layer of need is to me, I like to talk about it, is it's the going to the universal, to um, what's, what we share in common. So underneath our mind, we have our, our, mind, our individuality of minds and bodies uh, that have a sense of separateness, that there's a, a, a dimension of our experience that, that we are universal, where, where there's a unity uh, of all of life on the planet. We share the same, we're, we're all part of the same web of life. So to be able to experience that and to put language to it, we use the universal needs that uh, Marshall Rosenberg found that we could apply this idea of, of needs to communication, incredible insight, and that they relate, these needs relate to what we're thinking. We can, we can understand what we're, how we're evaluating, judging, thinking, how that relates to underneath that, what our needs are that we're communicating through those judgments and how we're feeling to connect that into our underlying needs. So that's on the language side, but to me, even deeper is that uh, the need level of experience is about awareness of awareness itself. So awareness becoming aware of itself, which is a pretty deep concept. So that's, that's an idea coming out of my study of kind of esoteric mindfulness uh, traditions of uh, uh, sometimes called non-duality, big fancy name, but to me, it's just that. How do we um, experience a sense of our oneness, but experience it, not just have it as a thought, a concept, but actually experience it. Um, so to me, this there's awareness of mind with observation, awareness of body with feeling, and then awareness of awareness with need. That is, which is really incredibly deep and subtle, that whatever we're experiencing, our perceptions of the world, our thoughts, our feelings, our body, all of that is arising within this being aware. And if we turn attention back on itself to try to be aware of our own awareness, that to me is like the kind of ultimate magic. Um, 
and that the needs are a, a way of putting language to that, but just with our attention, that to me is what happens on this, this need level. So that's pretty deep um, way of thinking about it, but it's very, very meaningful to me. Um, and then request is this, like, to me, it's, it's accurate. What do we want to ask for of ourselves and others being clear about that and having a request versus a demand. So that's a really important distinction. Demands tend to trigger that fight or flight reaction as much as judgments do. Um, but uh, in the request, that that is to me, it's like awareness taking the form of, of love and compassion, of giving and receiving, Marshall called it, compassion of giving and receiving. So to me, that's awareness coming back into the form of duality of life and, and, give, and focusing on love in action. So that's how I like to think about these four components in terms of the consciousness as well as language. And then the three chairs, the third chair to me represents that place of being able to bring that consciousness into our conversations, into conflict, into duality of our, our, our differences. And that uh, this idea of sort of sitting in the, or being in the third chair or imagining in a conversation between ourselves and another, what is that third chair that's just there holding us? To me, it's like, it's the space around us. It's the, it's the awareness, the loving awareness that is holding our, our experience of each other. And if I can have some attention there, it, it opens up my ability, my capacity to connect, even when it's really, really hard. So that may be a little confusing to some folks, but that's how I like to think about this, uh, the depths of what this approach to communication is, is really about, or in a deeper way about, and this three chairs, how to see that in a very deep, powerful way. Okay, so let's go back now into taking that kind of philosophical way of talking about it into back into the role playing. And here's what I have in mind next, if Erica is willing. Because what's another really uh, wonderful uh, learning about this, this triad practice of mediation is that we can rotate through the roles. So that kind of gets to these deeper aspects of the three chairs that we have these, it's a trinity of experience. We can have the perspective, we can be in the chair, so to speak, of our own individual separate experience. We can learn how to have empathy for the other chair, the person who's sitting across from us, the other. So instead of the other as this object that's somehow against us, we can see, oh, they're another subject. So a subject subject experience instead of subject object. And we can learn empathy from just ourselves, empathy with ourselves to have empathy for other and be able to, in a sense, get up and go over and sit in the chair of the other and try to, well, oh, what is this experience the other person is having? What are they seeing? What are they perceiving? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are their needs and wants? So, and then we can even, what does it mean to sit in the mediator chair? Yeah. And that, that perspective of self and other from that third dimension. So what we can do in, in role play in the triad, we can, you can move through the roles. So if Erica is up for trying this, Erica started off playing herself, right? And Simon played son and I was me there. Now we can rotate the roles. And if Erica it feels ready and wants to try this, she can take the role of the son, her son. And Simon can rotate into the mediator role and I can rotate into playing Erica's role. And then we'd, we st different ways you can continue, but let, I'd wanna demonstrate, we start again and we see what it's like to come at the conversation that way with having rotated our roles. And that tends to be really powerful. And then we, if we had time, we could even rotate one more time where Erica actually even sits in the mediator chair and Simon and I play the two roles, uh, which is uh, a whole nother level of like, wow. Uh, so let me just see if Erica, you're willing to uh, do this for a little bit. Yeah, I'm willing. I don't, yeah, 
it seems like a big challenge, a good one. <laughs> so, so let's bring Simon back in. So now Simon, you're a mediator. Erica, you're the sun. I'm you, Erica. And we just we can just start again. And let's yeah, let's yeah, we start with with uh, Erica. Yeah, let's 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 start with Erica. And again, let's so Erica, if you want to play with, you can dial up the difficulty a little bit more if you want to, or keep it kind of dialed down as you play that however you want to play the role. And uh, and Simon will uh, do his best with that. So let's uh, when you're ready, Simon, to bring us in back into the role. Yeah, son, I'm wondering what's going on for you. What is it that you would like? your mom to, to hear. Uh, oh, you're, you're muted, muted, Erica. You're muted. I want her to know that I understand what's going on. I don't need anything explained to me. Um, and whatever she thinks is fine, but it's not gonna change what I think because I mean, basically I'm right. Hmm. Yeah, so so it's like um you'd like your mom to know that that you you do understand her, but um you're feeling kind of firm in, in what's going on for you and what what you're believing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um I'm wondering uh how is it that you're that you're feeling right now sharing that? this is a made up answer because I wish I knew how he was feeling. Um, I'm feeling tired of her um, trying to fix me or um, talk to me about how I am or um, talk about how the family is because I I'm sick of it. I know what's going on. And I, I guess how I'm feeling is angry and frustrated and like it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so you're angry and frustrated and just kind of tired about some of the things that you're experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I heard you say that, um, you know, you really, you really don't want to be fixed that that's really important to you and um i'm wondering if you were to receive this like to not be fixed then what would that bring you that that's really important to you it it just doesn't matter to me what other people think anybody because i'm happy with who i am and i'm happy um with my life and i don't need anybody in my life i don't want anybody and so yeah i just don't need anything anyone yeah so i'm i'm hearing that you're thinking that you you're you're happy with the way you are and that you're kind of proud of of sort of not needing not needing anybody or needing anyone yeah is that and yeah, yeah. i'm wondering um i'm wondering if maybe you are wanting some some respect here around kind of the way you're doing things and yeah. the way you see the world. Yeah. Okay, like I respect for, that. sorry? Yeah, I would like that. Okay. So I think if I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, um, I heard that you're, you're feeling kind of angry and frustrated and you would really like to receive some some more respect for kind of what's going on for you and and your views of the world yeah she says that she respects me and that she loves me but she doesn't really like me she doesn't mm -hmm. like who i am and um no matter what she says mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so when you say that, is it is it like you would really like to to trust to trust that that um, that that you that you will receive the respect that you would really like? You really want to know that that your mom 
does care about you and respects you. Yeah, but I don't even care because it doesn't matter to me really. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'd like to know that. I think I know she loves me, but I don't need anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm wondering just now hearing you say that, how do you feel? I feel fine. Okay. So would it be all right um, if we check in with, with mom and see what she's, what she's uh, heard you say? Sure. Okay. So mom, thanks for being willing to listen to what son had to say and um i'd like to hear from you in a moment but first i i would i would i'm wondering if you would be willing to to say back what you heard uh your son is is feeling and, and kind of what's what's important to him yeah okay i i heard him say that he doesn't want to have to like that he doesn't maybe he doesn't want to care too much about what i think or something like that 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 wants to um i don't know be kind of independent or something and I, I heard the part about being angry and frustrated and not um, like being tired of the interactions, the difficulties between us. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I definitely heard the part about respect. I was kind of surprised to hear that word. And um, so, but then I, I think I also, I'm not sure if I, but that, like son that you 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 don't want to care too much or so, something about want not not about care but you or or not wanting to need that from me or something like that but that but that you do want to like be loved and respected and cared about and but you somehow think maybe I don't I don't even like you and that, that you, that's really you didn't say some of this but I I thought I might have heard this that that's painful for you or makes you upset and you kind of want to just, I don't know. Um, yeah, but I, but I, like, like I heard those are things you'd want, but you're not, you don't really know if you can get that from me. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you for saying that's what you heard. And, and um, mom, let's, let's check back in with, with son and and see see if she's feeling heard so or he um so son are you feeling like your your mom heard what's important to you um sorry it's hard to think backwards kind of like this um i don't care like she can think what she wants and and be who she is, it doesn't really bother me because I know who she is and I know what she thinks. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry, I'm kind of lost in the confusion of my real relationship with him because this is where I, I can't communicate. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, mom, um, what's, what, what, what's coming up for you having heard what son just said? Well, it's hard to hear. I mean, the, the, I, I hear this sense that almost like I don't matter to him, you know, and that's, that, that's part of me that gets really upset and hurt when I hear that. But I, but there's something else that I don't know if I've ever understood it the way that I am right this moment that so I might be really wrong son but I I don't know I'm 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 hearing that there's 
under your anger, there's some pain about some ways that I haven't been with you in a way that you're wanting. I've been focused on how you're not giving me what I want in our conversations and how difficult that is for me. But I guess I'm really getting right now more of there's something about our relationship and what you haven't been receiving from me that you've been wanting. And I'm not even really clear exactly what that is, but there's something about even a sense of you being liked or loved as you are. So again, I, I feel in this moment, this kind of like my, some, some new awarenesses of, of things I didn't know before, but I guess I'd want son, I want you to hear that. Um, I want to matter to you. I want us to matter to each other. And you said, you know what I think. I, you know, I, I don't have a sense always, maybe sometimes, but a lot of times I have a sense what you think is different than what I'm thinking. And I don't want to, I don't like being told what, what I'm like you thinking, you know what I'm thinking without checking in with me. But at the same time, I'm getting like, man, this, there's something deeper here between us. Um, about some care about what you think maybe and who you are. So I'm, I'm seeing it's maybe both of us feel the same way at some level. And that's, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, so is it, is it like um, when you were hearing what your son was saying that there's like some, some new thoughts are coming to you around maybe um, like some some realizations around how is that what I is that what I was hearing you say like some realizations around how you you would like to show up differently in the relationship and really be able to hear what's important to your son well it's it's more I'm just I'm having a sense that that it's it's both ways in some way that I didn't realize yeah um and that I want that for both of us. But I also, I really want him to hear that I, I don't like when he, when he thinks he knows what's true for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I really want him to, to check it out and to listen and to, to let me know what he's hearing me say, even if he sees it differently. And I'm, I'd try to do the same for him. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm not doing, maybe I'm not doing that very well with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm hearing that when um, that when you hear or when you're getting the sense that that um, that son is or uh, thinking or when you're when you're feeling like um, he's knowing what it is that that you are thinking, then you really don't like you really don't like that. Yeah. 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 And and I'm. I, I have a guess based on what I heard you say uh, about like really wanting to to know that you matter, but I'm wondering I'm wondering just like when you say that, maybe we can start with how you're how you're feeling. Well, right now I'm feeling really sad. Actually. You're sad. Really sad, and I do. I want to matter, and I want son. I want you to 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 feel like you matter, and that. Y your love for who for who you are mm -hmm. and i'm sad thinking maybe i'm not communicating that and 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 i want that from you but i also i'm sad both ways mm -hmm. yeah so sad both ways you're feeling sad because you're really wanting to know that that you matter and yeah. you also really want to communicate your love for your son in a way that he's able to take it in. Yeah, exactly, exactly, that's right. Yeah. Okay, thanks mom. Um, I'm wondering if now we can, we can check in with son to, to hear what he has heard you say. Would that be all right with you or? 
Yeah, I that's I said to the that is what I said or meant to say, and um, yeah, I think that that's a pretty positive integrated conversation to aim for. Um, it's so, excuse me, son. So <clears throat> excuse me. I'd really like to. Uh, I'm sensing that there's more that you want to share here, and I would really like to hear it in a moment. Um, but first, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to reflect what it is that you heard your mom say, just so that she can know that that she's being heard. Um, that she said she didn't realize that both of us feel the same way, possibly, and that there are ways that. Um, that she said she understood that or that she wanted me to um, listen to her when I have a different sense of who she is than she does. She'd like me to check in with her. Um, so, and that she'd like us to matter to each other. Mm -hmm. And um, that she didn't realize that maybe I want the same thing from her that she w wants from me. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty close. And I'm, I'm seeing mom, you nodding. Are, are you feeling heard? I am. I am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, son, for hearing me uh, in that way. And how about now, again, given our time, is, uh, Erica, is this okay play for us to pause and debrief a little bit? Yeah, it's fine. So let's start with, with you, and then I'm curious to hear from Simon too, but how was it to play the role of your son and be in the process again? How, how was that? It was really hard, um, but because I'm so much about context so it was just kind of pulling it out of my head instead of but um but I think it it's really informative to do that and maybe that's even a way of listening to him is to imagine that I'm him when he's talking to me and so it gave me some ideas maybe about how to move forward um you know and to think to be more more empathetic rather than trying to figure out what I can do to make it better, but just to be listening, learn better listening. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Simon, how was it for you to jump into the mediator chair? Cool, yeah, I um, was a little, yeah, it was fun. And um, I felt like I got some challenges on, on uh, different ends, I, mom, I, uh, you were saying a lot of things and I, I, I feel like if we had more time, I would have maybe, you know, um, gone into a little more in depth. It, it seemed like you were expressing a lot of needs beyond just like really wanting to know that you were mattering, but I was just trying to hear that what was most important to you. And, um, yeah, and I got to practice kind of requesting, Kind of maybe pull, pulling sun by the ears a little bit to 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 yeah. reflect re reflect what it is that you said. And so it was fun. Thank you both. Yeah, that's one of the nine mediation skills that in a, uh, pulling by the ears, Marsha Rosenberg expression to kind of refocus on the hearing of the other. And um, so towards the end, I'll, I'll I'll share a little about each of the nine skills. But yeah, thank you, Simon, for and that I just want you to know my feedback is that when you the way it came together at the end of my empathy for me, it felt so like that got it, got to the essence of to matter and that and and both of us to matter and as well as be 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 understood. Like there's the way that you articulate, you kind of sum that up that just felt so like, ah, oh, yes, that's exactly it. And that the way that you kind of helped son to hear it. Um, so I, I really, that really worked well for me. Okay. Thank you both so much. Thank you again, Erica, for coming on to do more with us and demo. Thank and you. now a time, a chance to put you in breakouts for a little bit.
and try and what we'd like you to do is use the same scenario of a mother and a son and you can take it in different directions if you want you know one of you will play this the if you if the people in your group want to do this but that one of you will take the role of of the mom one of you the son one of you the mediator and just play it out a little bit like we did use the steps if you have time even try rotating but base and try to keep the intensity level low and easy and just practice at a really easy level um, and experience just with this with this scenario. And Jeff's gonna get you set up for that. Okay, so uh, you'll be in groups of five. Yeah, my preference is um, to hear you sharing about what it was like for you if you did try out this mediation. If you hadn't if you hadn't done it before and you tried it, I would love to hear your experience. Uh, we don't have too much time to share right now, so I'd, I'd love to prioritize that if we could. So, uh, Jeff, I'll let you make the hard calls of who to uh, who to bring on. All right, it is a hard call. We haven't haven't heard from yet. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start with Serge and Samantha there in Montreal, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, well, it was it was a fun experience um, with. Um, with a scenario that we created, mom child, that was pretty realistic with some of the things we lived, and um, as we went through the uh, the steps, a uh, question that that I would have is how to transition from step four or five into the um, the four components. They, they they were kind of integrated in in the process, but at the end, we were like, okay, we weren't really maybe clear enough. Because you, you go with you... asking the first person to who, who would like to speak first. But at the, at the same time, you want to take care about the observation, the feeling, the need, and the request. So how do those blend in the process? So it was, a, it was a bit messy, but at the same time, it was, it was a good experience. It went well. I'm glad you uh, just kind of went for it and learned, experienced what you did. Yeah. So, but yes, there are lots of nuances to... Uh, to to practice with and get clear on so yeah appreciate you pointing those out thank you so much for sharing michelle from the united states yeah so i i guess what i wanted to share is i've been practicing nvc about four or five years maybe and i've um been spending a lot of time on the feelings and needs a lot of the empathy practice in this breakout i volunteered to be the mediator which felt like a very different role and um my team gave me a lot of very good challenges. <laughs> so it was a good practice. I don't know that we, we got very far, but we, we definitely practiced. So thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Uh, appreciate you jumping in. Sometimes we call it the hot seat because it's like, it's different. It's very different than sometimes it's like, ah. Oh. So yeah, glad you did that. And thanks for sharing about it. Cool. Who okay, else? John, the uh, next person is Yelka or and I had a great experience. It's first time I played the role of mother and my trainer, like son was Anita that I am accepting to be her student for life because we had a great session and great experience. I knew about this, but I think I will keep practicing more. Thank you so much. Grateful forever. Mm, wow, wonderful to hear. Thank you. Uh, next, let's go to uh, Deborah in Ontario, Canada. Hi, everyone. Hi, John. Hi, Deborah. Um, so we didn't practice. I have to confess that first, but we got a bit sidetracked because a couple of things came up. And one was this um, in the initial share about it, about the son's drinking. And that, that was uh, potentially a, a exasperating things. And mm -hmm. so that we just went down a curious spi spiral around that <clears throat> and what happens with NBC when you're drinking mm. and we speculated about that but I wondered uh, um, so there was that and then there was also the idea uh, also how the mother had um, uh, talks about how she listens a long 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 time and that maybe there's more interruptions and and how you you know we, we had thoughts about that how you would interrupt mm. that but what, mm. those were two things that we we kind of just went down a spiral around and I wondered what you would share about those. Yeah, well, in real life, right? There's all the complexities, lots of different factors and issues and things. And for role-playing, often it helps just to just to simplify it down 
and 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 I'll di- and that's another just dialing the difficulty down, right? Because once you start dialing up all that complexity and you know substance and like it's it's really gets overwhelmingly difficult fast. And so for practice, if you all want to keep practicing this in, in some ways of triad, just keep dialing it down, simplify it, really just work at a level that feels meaningful but not too difficult. So. Yeah, in real life, those are all important things to be able to deal with, yeah. Yeah, because like from a therapeutic point of view that I've learned about it is that it's like, he's not in relationship. He's in relationship with the alcohol. It's his primary relationship. It's very difficult then in his way of connecting with himself or, or other people. So almost the expectations need to go low, lower and more um, the mother may need her empathy needs met somewhere else, but just providing a lot of self-empathy and then just more providing the empathy that that person in so much pain and in, in the relationship with the addiction might need. Exactly. So in, in a role play that she can have maybe the, the kind of conversation, communication, connection that she'd like. And, you know, it might take whatever it might take to have it with the real person, but you can you can get a sense of the, you know, what we long for to have it show up in a real sense of a role play, right? And that can be quite powerful and lead to a lot of creative new ideas and ways of bringing that into the real thing. So that's, again, why role playing can be so, so powerful. Thank you so much, Debra, for that. So the thing I want to say, um, and one is about, I was invited to say something about pre-mediation. So in real mediation, yeah, I, I work with people ahead of time. I help them get ready to come together. And um, so again, there's the difference between real mediation, real life and role play and how powerful though, to do the work in role play with practice partners. And, and there's so much you can do there just without knowing how to you know do real mediation in real life. Um, just use the magic of these three chairs and the rotating through the chairs. So you may not have been, had time to experience that, but that's super powerful to play yourself, play the other person, play the mediator in, in the same situation. Uh, so I just wanna, in the handout, there are nine mediation skills. I just wanna name them just so you give you a sense of how they relate when difficulty, when it's more intense difficulty so there's uh, uh, the, the pulling by the ears came up that I think Simon referred to. So if, if person B does something different than reflecting back, how to gently, compassionately, but kind of firmly invite request this refocus on hearing the other person's experience, what the needs are. Another skill, emergency empathy. So that can come up. I imagine you all were, were thinking about this and it might've even come up in your breakout where the person gets triggered, say person B, hearing person A gets triggered. So the ability as mediator give emergency empathy. Oh, so this is coming up for you and you're feeling this and needing this. Oh, okay, now I wonder, then go back to pulling by the ears. Now I wonder if you have the space to just say what you heard the other person say, right? So that ability to give emergency empathy before pulling by the ears to hear the other. Um, tracking all this, there's skills around tracking, you know, keeping track of where we are with the steps. There's interrupting in a way that really connects instead of disconnects, right? Because we can interrupt in a way, if you're mediating and you want to come in and support someone to get, you know, how they're um, talking about what they're talking about, how they're relating to themselves and how the other person is hearing it, right? You might want to interrupt in various ways. How to do that with, with connect that connects instead of disconnects. And then there are times when you're mediating in mediation where you, you need to uh, get yourself some self-empathy. You know, stuff's come up against us as mediator in a mediator role. Give ourselves enough self-empathy, self-care, uh, and also self-expression as a mediator. Sometimes things are happening in a way we want to self-express to protect or support the process. So different ways we can self-express if people are doing things that are sort of taking away from the process or maybe feels a little unsafe for people, just how to come in in a, in a self-expressing way uh, that's supportive to the people, the process. And again, we talked about solution requests and agreements as well that are part of our step five, basically. So those are ways you can um, add, you know, whatever comes up, there are skills in this approach to deal with it. 
And uh, I just wanna also make reference to about intermediation. So we can, you can take something in or like um, Victor, I think it was, was speaking to um, earlier, but anyways, any kind of inner conflict, we can, you can put those out into the chairs and um, same process, same steps. Uh, and, um, but it can be super powerful to, to take these inner voices and have them get empathy from a third person and have them ap actually reflect back and have empathy with each other. So I invite you to play with that too, if you want. Uh, if you have people to practice with, try putting an intermediation into the chairs and, and, and playing it as if it's an outer conversation. All right, Jeff, uh, we're just at the end, we're at the end here. It's some things you wanna tell people. Yeah, three quick things. First of all, I want to thank you, John. Just uh, everyone, this was John's initiative and his idea. Uh, he offered to lead this session. So thank you very much, John. I found it very uh, heartwarming, very hopeful. So thank you. Mm. And um, John is actually going to be part of uh, an in-person training, a nine-day intensive training in Ireland at the end of February. And uh, we are very eager and hopeful about resuming our in-person trainings. Uh, I am well aware of the circumstances of the world that are presenting challenges to that with restrictions on travel and gathering in groups due to the COVID situation. Uh, and yet uh, we are determined to try to make this happen. So I'll send you more information on that. John is one of four trainers in this nine day intensive training. Uh, that Marshall Rosenberg founded many decades ago. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Uh, and we're offering an extension to the early bird. The early bird discount actually expires at the end of the day today. But I will send you all a follow-up email with the code that uh, if you attended this session, we're extending that for five days. Uh, otherwise, those of you who already gave a donation, thank you. All of my previous announcements were requests. But I forgot that many of you already made a donation. So thank you. Many of you have done so. Really appreciate it. And lastly, um, you will receive a follow-up email within about three days, which will contain a video recording, a link to a video recording, the chat transcript, and more information how you can learn more about John and also learn more about the Center for Nonviolent Communication and our, and our work around the world. So uh, yeah, if you came late, I'm Jeff Brown and I am um, the host of this session. I'm the director, the executive director of CNBC. And it's just been uh, really great to have you here. So I am going to uh, invite all of you to unmute if you'd like to say goodbye and uh, hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.